Hello friends, welcome back. Today, we're gonna add labels to D3 elements. D3 lets you label a graph element, such as a bar, using SVG text element. Uh, like, a re like the rect element, a text element needs to have an X and a Y attribute to place it on the SVG canvas. It also needs to access the data to display those values. D3 gives you a high level of control over how you label your bars. The code in the editor already binds the data to each new text element. First, append text nodes to the SVG. Next, add attributes for the X and Y coordinates. Then uh, they should be calculated the same way the rect ones, except the Y value for text should make the label sit three units higher than the bar. Finally, use D3 text method to set the label equal to the data point. Okay, so here we've got our SVG and we've got select all text. We're um, entering it one uh, text element per data set item. So we're gonna probably have nine in here and then um, we're going to enter. So uh, the first we want to append a text node. Uh, so we can say first append uh, text node to the SVG. Um, next, add the attribute. So ATTR, and then we want to make X, and they should be calculated the same as the rect was. So here we have our rect and our attribute of X. We're going to just copy this guy. And um, yeah, we could actually just do the same thing for Y. Uh, the y value for the should um, next and you should calculate the same way the rect was except the y value for the text sh should make the v label sit three units higher than the bar so instead of having it be y minus like that we could just say instead of height minus three ooh, i'm not sure but here's how i'm going to do it for initially i'm just going to say it should do it like this uh plus three Now, I'm not sure if that's right yet, because but we need to get the text in there. So finally, uh, use d3 uh, dot text, and then what we want to do is pass in the data point, right? So I'm just going to copy this to make it a little quicker. Uh, quicker. And um, yeah, well, here I'm going to actually do this in vanilla JavaScript to start off with, just because. I think it's better to do it this way, return d. Um, so I'm gonna console.log d and i, just now so you can see that we're passing all these values in. And now what we wanna do is, um, man, that's weird. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this and just set the <clears throat> y-axis to be the exact same. Awesome, okay, so now it pops up. So putting the plus three there was not the right move. I think maybe if I go plus three here. No, okay, minus three. Did you see how it went up and, and now it went down? And so we're returning D because each time we're iterating through the data points and we're making, we're returning D. So I can get rid of this console log. My guess is that tests will pass now. Okay, awesome. So yeah, this is in vanilla JavaScript. We can get rid of these comments now. We don't need them. Because this is the last one of the chain, I'm putting a semicolon here because that's the way you're supposed to do it. Um, so yeah, we can obviously, <clears throat> not obviously, but this is the, these are ES6 functions as well. So let's make it so this, it becomes an ES6 function too. So we can take out the word function and put the arrow guy in there. If we run the tests, this one will pass as well. But um, with ES6, we can make implicit returns, which means we can get rid of the bracket and the return. And then we will get a even more succinct answer. And if we run the tests, they will pass as well. And so, yeah, the whole tricky part about this one is just getting this right. Uh, the only reason that I knew which way to do it was just I played with it, you know? When I had plus three, the labels were in there. So I just make it minus three and that's right there. I'm not sure if this is exactly the way they want it to be done, but it passes the test, so we're good to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.